Good evening. It's um, roughly nine o'clock in Damascus in the evening on a hot and humid night. First of all, thank you for listening to me. Thank you for the time that you're spending listening to me. Um, I'd like to say greetings from Damascus to Lindsay Bow. You're an absolute star, young lady. Uh, thank you for your support and everything you do for me. Okay. I've been asked a few questions about the Syrian civil war. First of all, it's not a civil war. It's a war of proxy. The war in Syria started two years before the actual conflict. It was economic terrorism. Terrorism started up in Aleppo. People were paid dollars not to go to work actually paid money not to work. Now Aleppo is the big industrial area of Syria. It's the heartland of factories, industry and economics. So Saudi Arabia, Qatar and the Gulf countries paid people money not to go to work. Then you have the fake revolution that took place. The one that we like to call the Arab Spring, I call it the Arab Winter, because everywhere it went, it destroyed the infrastructure of each country. One of the questions I've been asked is how many terrorist groups there are in Syria. This is a difficult one, because there's main groups, subgroups, and sub-subgroups, believe it or not. The main ones are Al-Nusra. Al-Nusra, whose real name is Al-Qaeda, they're the same people that attacked the Twin Towers, that attacked various places around the world. They're classed as moderate. It's funny what a name change can do for you because you go from being the out and out Ben Laden bad guy to the poster boy for Western policies. You then have al Sinki, Chechenian, hardline, good fighters, um, but really, really hardline. Then you have Joshua Islam. Joshua Islam is one of the moderate groups. There's nothing moderate about Joshua Islam because basically if you don't follow their ways or believe in what they believe, they kill you. And they kill you in some really, really bad ways. They're responsible for massacres. They're responsible for white phosphorus explosives attacks. They're responsible for napalm, homemade napalm, phos gas. You name it, any weapon, they'll use it. They don't care because we who are not of what they believe in, if you don't follow them, you're classed as a monkey, a chicken or an animal. They'll kill you. It's that simple. But the difficulty you have is you can't just go on about this group or that group. You have to look at what is the cause of these groups. Now, you have the men on the ground, the terrorists operating on the ground. But behind them, you have the propaganda machine that supports them. Then you have the financial machine that supports them. And this is where it's at. This is what we need to look at. We need to look at the money. Follow the money. Right? Al Nusra, US, UK, Saudi, Qatar, financed all the way along. The amount of money they've had has been unbelievable. Uh, you could have financed your whole National Health Service with the money that we've given. America could have refinanced social housing, education, medical, the amount of money it spends. <laughs> then you have to also look at the partners in this. Partners like Israel who actively support Al-Nusra and IS in the Jolan area because it suits them. It suits them that Syria is weak, fighting a war, 
with terrorism and Israel is strong. Israel re wants to remain strong. It doesn't want to go back to the old ways of being, oh, slightly more weaker than Syria because Syria thrashed them the last time they had a conflict. So, who are the mercenaries? Okay. Al Nusra, say 50% are paid mercenaries, 50% are also paid, but they're more Islamic fundamentalists, uh, fanatics. Same thing with Al Qaeda, same thing with uh, Helsinki, definitely Joshua Islam. Joshua Islam um, just extorts money anywhere it can. And IS is exactly the same. Now they operate in a way that is slightly different. They operate like pirates. The higher rank you are, the more of the booty you get. As you progress down the pay scale to the foot soldier, you get roughly around about $150 per month, which is good for the Middle East. The Syrian soldier, on the other hand, gets a standard wage of $50 a month. The next question was, well, it wasn't the next question. The actual question was, if we break it down, if you look at the Syrian campaign, it's a PR company based in New York. It helps finance terrorism, but it's run by the US State Department. If you look at the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, PR company for terrorism. Boris Johnson, just give them a million dollars, well, a million pound. So, you have to look at the financial sections of each group. Once you do that, you start to find the financial trail. And the financial trail always leads back to governments. They're just mercenaries. That's all they are. Each and every one of them is here for a reason. To make money, to steal, and to destroy a country that has a multicultural religious groups because once they do that they have a foothold in the Middle East a strong foothold my big worry is not so much the terrorists it's the governments behind the terrorists now this war came about for one thing only natural resources Saudi Arabia has oil it doesn't have gas. Syria has oil and large, large fields of gas. So before this war started, there was two pipelines proposed. One was Qatar to Europe, and the other one was Iran to Europe. Syria chose Iran. That was a mistake in Western eyes, because Iran is the demon. That's how the West looks at it. So, Syria chooses, chooses the Iran pipeline. Then, all the trouble starts. Why? Because of the petrol dollar, that's why. Any person in the Middle East and in Africa who has chosen to divert money, their finances, their economic growth from the dollar has suffered. Libya, he wanted to return to the gold standard. What happened to him? Gaddafi, they killed him. Saddam Hussein, same. As soon as you start interfering with the dollar, you can guarantee that the Western powers will be on your back. Now, this is a difficult one. Some people might class me as a traitor. Some people might say that I'm 
anti-Jewish. I'm not. I'm anti-Zionist. I don't believe Israel has the right to exist. I don't believe that Jolan should be illegally occupied. And I don't believe that Palestine should be illegally occupied either. Israel is one of the main causes of the trouble in the Middle East, but it's financially backed by the USA to the tune of $11 million per day. Just think what you could do with $11 million a day in America. Social housing, medical care, welfare, better use of money for veterans, because you've been in every war. Since your conception, the United States government has been in every war. It has never seen peace. Because arms and war make money. Armalite, M16s. Every time a soldier has to go to war, he gets new clothing, new weaponry, new body armor, new helmet, new boots. It amounts to $12,000 per soldier. That's just to kit him out. So when you have new soldiers, you make $12,000. Someone profits from that. Every time you fire a Tomahawk missile, it has to be replaced. Someone profits from that. Every time there's a drone strike, someone profits from it because it all has to be missed. <laughs> It all has to be replaced. The Vietnam War, Boeing was going bust. Their production, the helicopters weren't selling. All of a sudden, they were making 3,000 helicopters per year. Hence the Vietnam War. Arms factories, munitions. Just recently, America has been discovered and Britain's been discovered sending in 7.62 short AK ammunition. Questions are being asked about that now, but they'll all be brushed under the carpet, like everything else. This is why independent journalism is important. 25 years ago, what was doing with independent journalism have been asked. Well, you have to look at the Vietnam War. The Americans invited any independent journalist, any TV channel, anyone they could get to publicize their war in Vietnam, and it backfired on them. You had people like Page, Flynn, Stone, great photojournalists, great, great reporters. They reported. They, they were allowed to fly anywhere in Vietnam. They were giving ranks of majors so nobody could interfere with them, no GI could interfere with them. That ended at the end of the Vietnam War. Every war since, it's been hand-picked reporters, hand-picked journalists, journalists that are willing to do what their government tells them to do, make the reports that their government wants them to, and to cover what their government needs to be covered. We go to war with Iraq on a lie. We destroy Libya on a lie and we destroy Syria on a lie. Well, we try to destroy Syria on a lie, but Syria was just ballsy enough to withstand it due to the Syrian Arab army and its people. Now, I'm not gonna rub it on all night. I'll answer any questions you wanna give me and I'll do it on a nightly basis. So you send me the questions and I'll answer them. But don't send me large piles of questions because it takes me six hours to upload this because the internet is that bad. And I don't like to stay awake six hours. So send me questions that really matter and I'll answer them for you. Thank you very much for listening and um, I'm going to go to sleep now. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Lindsay. Love you, darling. Take care. Bye.